Hey there, Boots Owen here. I posted a video a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, about this Solic 200 from Earthwise and how it was making me scratch my head a bit because it seemed to be using electricity that was from the grid. It's only meant to use stuff from the solar. It's got this current clamp that goes in here and power comes into it, you know, just on an immersion circuit and it fills up this tank here through this immersion down here. Um, with hot water. We've got about two kilowatts of spare solar today. It's October 2023. Um, and this time it's easy kind of to assess because this light's on, this light's on, and this is a new energy meter that transmits to a Servo GX, which is a Victron product, which is a Wi Fi linked, I don't know, control board or something. Um, so this energy meter measures energy rather than current. It's flashing a bit, but only a little bit. It's kind of going on and off. This one's on solid. I've seen it go on and off while I've been watching it about, for about a minute before I made the video. Likewise, they're all kind of in a state of no power going in or out, which is what we want, which is what the Solic is meant to do. I fitted this multi plus two inverter and some batteries. Oh, I don't know, between the two videos, I guess. And this is working away, this battery is at 95% at the moment, and I was prompted to pause, well no, I was prompted to turn on the Solic, because it's been off for a couple of weeks while I've been getting to grips with this thing. Um, I was prompted to turn it on because there was so much solar going out, and this will only charge once we're into the absorption rate um, at a couple of hundred watts. So not much power was going into the batteries, and I thought, well, two, two kilowatts is escaping. I could have turned on a heater or something like that equally and just done it manually, but I wanted to check this. So in the last video, I used my clamp meter, this fellow here, to check power going, not power, current. That's eight amps, which is about roughly two kilowatts. That's about right. But I also put it on here and I was getting four and I'm getting five. Well, that clearly is not right for whatever reason because I, I'm happy from all the red lights and also from the display, which I can't show you because it's on my phone, which I'm making this video with, but the display was showing two kilowatts going, um, being consumed in the house, mostly by this, maybe a hundred watts elsewhere, and two kilowatts being generated by the solar. So it seems to be matching. I had to turn off the inverter temporarily while I'm doing this, um, just basically saving the power. It's only been on for about 10 minutes, so it's not even getting warm yet, but anything going in there preheats the water before it goes to our combi boiler. I've got another video to put up about that and the Solic installation. I just haven't got around to it yet. It's a rather, well, it's not rather a long video. I haven't done it yet, but I've started to ramble. The conclusion is that I think the Solic works. I think it works best when there's a huge surplus of solar, like we're talking into over a kilowatt. I think when it's hovering around, you know, 100 watts of surplus, it doesn't have much of a buffer. It tries to regulate to zero, and if its sun's flicking in and out behind clouds, it confuses everything. But you can see right now, when there's lots of sun and not so much load, then we're getting pretty much constant, apart from this one, which is turning off again, we're getting pretty much constant energy flow, or, or, or con constant no energy flow, because... This one, this light is constant, which means power is leaving the house. This light is constant, which means power is coming into the house. So they're both basically balanced to zero. And this one is fairly constant. The green just means that the power is on and the flashing light means that it's transmitting through this data cable up to this USB stick converter, which is also flashing into the servo, which is going into the internet. So there you go. I think the Solix working after all. It's just an update video really. This clamp here goes to a display that I've got turned off upstairs, but it was given the energy um, flowing through not the energy. Well, it does, it converts it to energy, but it's really just current flowing through this cable, which is the main live into the house. Um, it's an OVO, I think, or no, Onzo or Onzo. Um, they were cheap to buy when I got them, but it doesn't show direction. That's the fault of that one. But equally, I'm not sure how, well, I think, I think it was given the right answers actually uh, when it was on. So it was just this current clamp that's confusing me. Whether I put it onto neutral, 4.7, or phase, 
5.1, they should be the same. Um, it doesn't doesn't really make sense. Now I can put it onto here, which is the one going from the solar, and that's what the solar is generating. So that seems about right. So why a cable with zero current should be reading 4.8 is somewhat of a mystery. And once again, I'll go back down here, getting up on nine amps, there you go. Really, it should be the same, because this is the lead coming from the solar panels. Um, really, it should be the same, but something's working out okay. I, I think it's really that I shouldn't have faith in this current clamp. But there you go, or something to do with true RMS, maybe? I don't know, I'm getting out of my depth again. Questions or comments? Leave them below about this Solic and about the installation. I have plans to put up videos about this, but when I was installing it, I was somewhat more taken away from the video making world. What, the, what confused me a bit is that there's a current clamp here measuring solar. There's an energy meter here measuring power in and out of the house. It's got its own way of measuring what's going in and out of the batteries and battery stuff. But getting this cable right, uh, Victron want 30 quid, or the websites that sell Victron stuff want 30 pounds plus for a piece of data cable and a USB converter. The USB converter costs a fiver on eBay. I think it was eBay. And you've just got to figure out the wiring. So I might put up a video about that if anyone's interested. The installation generally is relatively straightforward. Although what caught me out was the addition of a temperature sensor on the negative. I didn't do that and it didn't really want to charge or discharge. But there we go. Solic, I think you're working again, which is super. Questions or comments, leave them below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. See you later.